Throughout this channel's brief existence, we've covered a plethora of topics regarding the Cosmere. From the basics of investiture to the different world hopper organizations down to the weird and wacky world of realmatic theory. The Cosmia has a lot to offer and Brandon Sanderson seems to be happy just adding more and more to this fantasy universe. So today we'll be looking at another one of those interesting yet obscure Cosmia concepts. Yes, today we'll be looking at splinters and slivers. We'll be briefly discussing what they are, how they form and the different examples we know of in the existing Cosmia. I'll keep this video short and spoiler free so don't worry if you aren't fully caught up on all the Cosmia works. Also, the channel just recently hit 1000 subscribers and I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for your support in hitting this amazing milestone. I did a celebration video for it recently and made some pretty big announcements, so if you haven't seen it, I recommend you check it out to get an idea of what's coming for the channel. Anyway, I said I'd keep this brief so let's jump right into the topic of today's video. Splinters so, if you've watched my previous Cosmere 101 videos, you'll know that the story of the Cosmere all starts with Adonalsium at the event known as the Shattering. Adonalsium was the god or creator entity of the Cosmere, and one day 16 different individuals came together and destroyed this god for some unknown purpose. This event was known as the Shattering. Because Adonalsium's power was so great, the magical energy within it was not destroyed but rather shattered into 16 different pieces. These 16 pieces or shards were then taken and absorbed by these individuals who killed the god entity. The shards are fragments of Adonalsium's original power and are now held by the 16 vessels. Now to get back to the topic at hand. Splinters are smaller pieces of investiture, or magical energy, from these shards or from Adonalsium itself. A splinter is a small piece of magical energy that is no longer attached to or part of the original shard. And to make matters more interesting, these 16 shards, who are now gods of their own worlds considering all the power they hold, can also be destroyed. Shards have fought in the past and have destroyed one another. As such, there are actually less active shards now than the original 16. As an example, the shards of Dominion and Devotion have both been destroyed. This event is what's known as splintering a shard. So while splinters can form as a natural consequence of shards being nearby, they also very commonly manifest when a shard is splintered. For example, if you look at the planet of Roshar where the Stormlight Archive takes place, all the spring in the world are splinters of honor and cultivation. Yes, I know there are other types of spring too, but I won't go into those for fear of spoilers. But as far as this video is concerned, the spring are of honor and cultivation, the two shards who reside on the planet. Something happened in the planet's past, however, that caused one of these shards to be splintered. The vessel died and the collective shard of power originally from Adonalsium was splintered into pieces. That magical energy, or investiture, then formed more spren, and thus all of the remaining power from that original shard now exists only as splinters in the form of new or previously existing spren. The surviving shard does have splinters of its own, but those are more due to the natural process of power slowly splintering off of it than being destroyed. And most spren are also a combination of the power from both shards, proving that splinters can be created through combining different investitures. But let's look at another less spoilery example. On the world of Cell, where the story of Elantris occurs, there were once two shards residing there as well. These were the shards of Dominion and Devotion, as I mentioned previously. These two shards were destroyed long before civilization started on the planet and thus all that is left of their power are the splinters left behind. These splinters are the Sions and the Skays. If you've read Elantris, you'll have an idea of what these beings are, but basically they are self-aware splinters of investiture that have a multitude of magical properties about them. But I just realized that all the examples of splinters I've been giving are heavily focused on the destruction of a shard. This is actually not the case, since splinters can form just as a result of a shard investing themselves on a planet. Let's look at Nalthus, where Warbreaker takes place. On Nalthus, there are hundreds or maybe thousands of splinters that have existed in the planet's lifespan. 
And if you're scratching your head trying to think what I'm talking about, then you've likely fallen into the same trap I did. You see, splinters aren't just little self-aware or half-sentient entities roaming around the place. Remember what I said in the beginning, a splinter is a small piece of magical energy that is no longer attached to or part of the original shard. That definition doesn't mention it becoming a creature or entity at all. And if you've read Warbreaker, you'll know that nothing like that exists on the planet as far as we're aware. So, taking that into consideration, can you think what the potential thousands of splinters on Nalthus would be? The answer is the Divine Breath. Divine Breaths are splinters of the Shard of Endowment, who is still very much alive and well. The Shard hasn't died, and the Shard hasn't been damaged. Endowment freely and willfully splintered some of her power to bestow it upon certain recently deceased individuals who hold potential in her eyes. If they accept the splinter, they come back as what is known as the returned and are even worshipped in certain countries. Splinters are quite interesting and come in many shapes and sizes. Some splinters are the result of a shard being destroyed while others are normal manifestations or deliberately created by the shard itself. Some splinters are self-aware and intelligent creatures that shape the world in their own way while others are barely sentient or just a form of raw magical energy. And splinters don't have to manifest only when a shard invests itself in a planet. If a shard stays on a planet for a while and then leaves, it might very well leave splinters behind on the planet. Even Adonalsium itself has left splinters behind on planets it visited before being shattered. Slivers There isn't much to say on the subject of slivers unfortunately, which is why this section of the video will be quite a bit shorter. But to sum it up for you, a sliver is a being of at least human level intelligence who has at some point held part of or all of a shard's power and then released it. That means that a sliver had to have held a shard's power, essentially becoming a vessel at that point, and then given that power up and released the shard to find or claim a new vessel. Alternatively, the portion of the shard's power that the person held could also have been used up and expended, which would make the person a sliver as well. Having held so much power and having had one's mind, body and spirit transcend anything a normal human could grasp has a definite effect on the individual. This stretching and expanding, followed by the rapid shrinking and deflating, makes a noticeable change in the person's spirit web or soul. All the effects of this is currently unknown, but this is basically what one would consider as a sliver. Now, I'll be talking about some examples of slivers, but because of how this information is revealed in the books, I will put up a spoiler warning here. If you have not yet finished the first Mistborn trilogy as well as Mistborn Secret History, the following section will have mild to potentially major spoilers for certain key characters. Also, there are some hints at events in Stormlight Archive, at least up to the end of Oathbringer, so please proceed with caution. So, there are only a handful of slivers that we know of, most of which come directly from the planet of Scadriel, where Mistborn takes place. Rashek, who eventually became the Lord Ruler, was a sliver of preservation. Having held a majority of the Shard's collected power when he used the Well of Ascension, and then having used up all of that power resulted in him becoming a sliver. Similarly, Vin became a sliver when she held the Shard of Preservation and became its new vessel. Her fight with Ruin resulted in both vessels dying of course, but she still considered a sliver despite having died while holding the power. I wonder if this means that Leras, the original vessel, was a sliver as well, but I don't think we ever got confirmation on it. And the final sliver from Scadriel we know of, and once again major spoilers for Mistborn Secret History, is the one and only Kelsia. Kelsia held preservation between the death of Leras and Vin taking it. The power did resist him and did not want to be controlled by him, but he held it and eventually gave it up for Vin to take. Thus, he fits the definition of being a sliver perfectly, despite being a cognitive shadow. And our final example comes with a light spoiler warning for Oathbringer. Nothing plot-wise, but there are some details revealed here that some may prefer to read in the books themselves. The only other sliver we know of is the Stormfather. 
Now, spren cannot usually become slivers as they are splinters, and the Stormfather is a spren. But the Stormfather did fuse with the cognitive shadow of Tanavast, Honor's vessel. That likely makes him a special case and thus pushes him into sliver territory. This was confirmed by Brandon at a convention a few years back. Dalinar is a strong candidate for a potential new sliver. He holds a lot more of Honor's power than Bondsmiths have in the past, and it is a popular fan theory to say that Dalinar will become the new Honor due to his character arc and abilities. I don't hold much stock with that theory, but I can definitely see him becoming a sliver at the very least, if it's possible. Slivers and splinters are incredibly interesting concepts within the Cosmere, and something I almost completely overlooked at first. There's so much to explore within the Cosmere, and I look forward to seeing what else Sanderson has in store for us. As a reminder, I do have a regular segment on the channel called Cosmere Q&A, where you can leave your questions or ideas for things you'd like to see videos on. Comment something interesting and I may just do a video on it. We've already done videos on the Ghost Bloods, Cognitive Shadows and the Unmade, so consider leaving a comment and you may just see it come up. Also, once again, I'd like to remind you to check out the 1000 subscriber celebration video I did. It's a good way to catch up on all the interesting updates and new developments for the channel, and I'd also like you to take a look at the new Discord server that we set up for the channel. It's a great community we're building here, and we're just having fun talking about the Cosmere and making memes, so definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Anyway, that's about it from me for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. My name has been Raven, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everybody.